On February 24th, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, the world's largest semiconductor foundry giant, inaugurated its first wafer factory in Japan. The completion of this factory, called JASM, not only signifies a significant step in TSMC's global expansion, but also injects strong momentum into the revival of Japan's semiconductor industry. TSMC controls over half of the global semiconductor production and possesses the most advanced 3 nanometer process. Semiconductors are crucial to national economies and defense capabilities, being indispensable in various applications ranging from smartphones, automobiles to missiles and artificial intelligence. Especially amidst the global surge in AI and high-performance computing, high-end semiconductors play a pivotal role. Hence, since 2019, TSMC has played an increasingly important role in Taiwan's diplomacy and geopolitics. Amid the escalating tensions in the Taiwan Strait, TSMC has expanded its overseas presence to protect its supply chain. JASM marks TSMC's first overseas wafer factory opened in recent years, established in collaboration with Sony, Denso Corporation, and Toyota Motor Corporation, with a total investment of 8.6 billion U.S. dollars. It will produce logic chips for automotive, industrial, consumer, and high-performance computing, including process technologies of 40, 22-28s, 12 16ths, and 6 and 6 sevenths nanometers. When it begins production by the end of the year, it will become Japan's most advanced logic wafer factory. Chairman of TSMC, Mark Liu, said that opening JASM is a significant milestone in TSMC's global expansion and a significant achievement in cooperation between TSMC and Japan. He stated that TSMC will continue to invest in Japan to assist in the development of Japan's semiconductor industry. Furthermore, in February of this year, TSMC announced further expansion in Kumamoto City, planning to build its second wafer factory by the end of the year, with mass production scheduled for 2027. The second factory will provide a 6 nanometer, 7 nanometer, and 40 nanometer process technologies, with an estimated investment of 13.9 billion US dollars. The total investment for both factories will reach $22.5 billion. After completion, the monthly production capacity of the two factories is expected to exceed 100,000 12-inch wafers. TSMC will supply these wafers to technology companies and automakers, including Sony and Toyota Motor. According to Japanese media reports, TSMC is considering the establishment of a third or even fourth factory. With this plan in place, Japan is set to become another crucial production base for TSMC in the Asian region. Additionally, TSMC's factory in Arizona, USA, commenced construction in 2021 with a total investment of 40 billion US dollars. It will mainly produce 5 nanometer process chips with mass production expected in the first half of 2025. The second phase of the project is expected to produce 3 nanometer process chips by 2026. In August 2023, TSMC announced the establishment of European Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, ESMC, in collaboration with Infineon, NXP, and Bosch. They will be constructing a 12-inch wafer factory in Dresden, Germany, to make 28 nanometer chips for automotive applications. Construction of the factory is set to start in the fourth quarter of 2024, with mass production expected by the end of 2027. TSMC's main chip production has traditionally been in Taiwan, with the only exception being the establishment of a factory in Nanjing, China in 2016. Now, TSMC extends its production lines to three locations, Arizona in the United States, Kumamoto in Japan, and Dresden in Germany, forming a global layout across Europe, Asia, and the Americas. This expansion marks the first substantial overseas expansion of TSMC production system in its over 30 years since founding. TSMC's strategic shift from Taiwan is primarily driven by the Chinese Communist Party's stance towards Taiwan. The CCP claims Taiwan as its territory and is not ruling out the use of force to annex it. TSMC's customers and governments worldwide are concerned that if Taiwan's security is threatened, it will impact the crucial semiconductor supply for their economies and defense. Therefore, encouraging TSMC to produce more semiconductors outside Taiwan aims to diversify its manufacturing capacity and reduce risks. According to Taiwan's central news agency, TSMC founder Morris Chang attended the opening ceremony of JASM on February 24th. In a rare public appearance, the 92-year-old stated, This gesture will 
I believe, improve the resiliency of chip supply for the for Japan and for the world. I hope and I believe for start a renaissance of semiconductor manufacturing in Japan. Semiconductors will be uh, very much needed. Cheng also mentioned that he expects semiconductor demand to rise. Recently, AI experts told him that what they need is not just tens of thousands or millions of units, but more wafer fabs, three, five, or even ten wafer fabs. Although he doesn't fully believe in AI experts, he will take the middle ground between tens of thousands to ten wafer fabs. Chang pointed out that JSA will revive Japan's semiconductor manufacturing industry. This aligns with the Japanese government's current strategic policies. Japan boasts a mature semiconductor material industry, almost monopolizing the global market. Among the 19 materials commonly used in the early stages, 14 are dominated by Japanese companies. In the 1980s, companies like Toshiba and NEC brought Japan to the top of the microchip field. However, Japan's problem lies in its focus primarily on fundamental research in semiconductor industry development, while neglecting application and innovation at the pattern level. Facing competition from South Korea and Taiwan. One, Japan's share of the global semiconductor manufacturing market has plummeted from over 50% to 10%. In recent years, Japan has realized the importance of semiconductors to economic security, especially amid the global chip shortage caused by the pandemic, which has had a significant impact on Japan's economy. Subsidies for semiconductor production in the United States have also had an impact. Tokyo authorities hope to revitalize Japan's advanced semiconductor manufacturing industry while strengthening its industrial supply chain to cope with the escalating tensions with neighboring China. According to Nikkei, TSMC entry serves as a catalyst, prompting Japan to invest heavily in supporting the construction and expansion of semiconductor factories. The semiconductor investment is expected to reach 9 trillion yen, 60 billion U.S. dollars, by 2029. Japan will provide up to 4 trillion yen. 26.7 billion U.S. dollars in government subsidies to double domestic semiconductor sales to over 15 trillion yen, 100 billion U.S. dollars by 2030. Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry has pledged to provide a maximum subsidy of 476 billion yen, 3.16 billion U.S. dollars to JASM, covering over 40 percent of the cost for the first factory. The second factory will receive a maximum subsidy of 732 billion yen, 4.86 billion U.S. dollars. In addition, the establishment of JSM has brought jobs to Japan. The Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry said that JASM will recruit 500 employees from Taiwan, along with 1,700 local employees. This totals 3,400 employees for TSMC's Kumamoto plant. According to the preparation plant for TSMC's second factory, recognized by Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, JASM is scheduled to launch semiconductor courses at Kyushu University and prepare scholarship systems related to semiconductors. When recruiting Japanese employees, JASM will actively admit Japanese university graduates, technical college graduates, or high school graduates. In fact, the rapid construction and commissioning of the JASM factory not only owes to the strong support of the Japanese government, but also to Japan's diligent work culture and easy to deal with style, which align well with TSMC's operations. Liu Peizhen, a researcher and director of the Industrial Economics and Knowledge Center at the Taiwan Institute of Economic Research, analyzed that this signifies a closer cooperation between Taiwan and Japan in semiconductors, which benefits both parties. It also represents a critical foothold seized by TSMC in the new round of global deployment. Liu pointed out that from Taiwan's perspective, the Japanese government's subsidies and allocation speed demonstrate Japan's enthusiasm. Moreover, the similarity in work culture between Taiwan and Japan has ensured that the progress and pace of the Kumamoto factory meets expectations. Liu analyzed that from Japan's perspective, the hope is to revive its semiconductor industry amid geopolitical turmoil from the U.S.-China tech war. Therefore, leveraging TSMC's strength will enhance Japan's semiconductor presence globally. If the first, second, and third factories can progress smoothly, Japan will be able to meet local customer demands, meaning that TSMC plays a crucial role in assisting Japan's rise in the semiconductor industry. 
By leveraging TSMC's strength, Japan must also leverage local resources, including water, electricity, and infrastructure. Particularly, Japan's advantages in semiconductor equipment and materials can complement Taiwan's relatively insufficient semiconductor segments. This cooperation is a win-win situation. According to Reuters, other semiconductor chip companies from Taiwan have expanded their businesses into Japan. In the past two years alone, at least nine companies have set up factories or expanded operations in Japan. This reflects Taiwan's decoupling from China. The United States is trying to restrict China's progress in advanced semiconductor fields. The global semiconductor industry is changing rapidly. As the trend of decoupling from China intensifies, many Taiwanese semiconductor companies are expanding into Japan, boosting its industry. For example, let's examine Allchip Technologies, a semiconductor design company without a wafer fab. In 2022, most of Allchip's research and development engineers were still in China. However, Allchip had begun gradually shifting positions overseas, moving parts of its supply chain to Japan. Currently, recruiting is ongoing in Japan, North America, and Taiwan. Additionally, Taiwanese e-memory technology, a semiconductor design company, established an office in Yokohama two years ago and hired 11 Japanese employees. Taiwan's GUC, another ASIC design company, is looking to strengthen its business in Japan. MA Tech. A company that provides semiconductor material analysis and testing services that works with TSMC opened a new laboratory in Kyushu at the end of last year. Finesse Tech, another major semiconductor equipment supplier to TSMC, is setting up a factory in Japan. Another supplier to TSMC, Market Tech, is expanding in Japan. According to two sources, the weak Japanese yen is a significant incentive for semiconductor companies from Taiwan to expand in Japan. On May 17th of last year. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida met with leaders of some of the world's largest semiconductor manufacturing companies, including Morris Chang, chairman of TSMC, and Pat Gelsinger, CEO of Intel. At that time, Japan was actively strengthening its domestic semiconductor manufacturing capabilities. According to Reuters, informed sources revealed that Samsung Electronics is considering building a semiconductor facility near Tokyo, with Japan allocating subsidies worth approximately $110 million. Additionally, the Japanese government expects to provide around 1.5 billion U.S. dollars in incentive funds to support U.S.-based micron technology in producing next-generation memory chips at its Hiroshima plant. It is said that Micron will begin increasing production of AI storage semiconductors like HP. From 2025 onwards, not only does the Japanese government encourage foreign companies to invest in Japan and establish factories, but it also supports a domestic semiconductor company, Rapidus, to revitalize the domestic semiconductor industry. Rapidus, in collaboration with IBM and the European Semiconductor Research Organization (IMEC), plans to begin mass-producing state-of-the-art two-nanometer chips on the northern islands of Hokkaido from 2027 onwards. The Japanese government and private companies. Are also seizing the opportunity in the AI development boom. On February 27th, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg met with Prime Minister Kishida in Tokyo to discuss AI. In 2023, Kishida had already met with Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, and Jensen Huang, CEO of Nvidia, to discuss issues such as AI regulation and infrastructure. From all this, it can be seen that after experiencing 30 years of decline, the Japanese economy is now entering a new period of growth and change, with semiconductors and high technology playing crucial roles. Mitsuaki Shibata, the Tokyo bureau chief of Nikkei, highlighted during an interview with Taiwanese media Age of Money that TSMC's establishment of a factory in Japan carries multiple benefits. TSMC's presence in Japan can uplift Taiwan's global image, stature, and strategic significance. It also fosters economic integration between Taiwan and Japan, marking the initial step towards Japan-Taiwan security integration. Some media outlets in Japan have called TSMC's arrival a black ship event, meaning a transformative event for Japan. A black ship event is a reference to the 1853 arrival of a U.S. Navy fleet in Edo Bay. The Americans came to negotiate trade with Japan. It is regarded as the beginning of Japan's modernization and internationalization. The term "black ship" originated from the fact that the hulls of these ships were painted black. The entry of TSMC into Japan after the burst of Japan's bubble economy will have a significant impact on Japan's business model. Shibata even described it as Japan's second opening, which will change Japanese culture. 
The second benefit is providing Japan with a stable supply of semiconductors, making the Japanese economy more stable. Thirdly, it signifies the return of Japan's manufacturing industry. In the 1980s and 1990s, most of Japan's manufacturing industry moved to China and Southeast Asia, leading to industry hollowing out. Now Japan's manufacturing industry is coming back with high-end manufacturing, which is a significant confidence boost for Japan. Moreover, the successful cooperation between Taiwan and Japan benefits not only the industry, but also the interests of both countries, making it a win-win for national security. The only loser is China. In the past, both Japanese and Taiwanese companies invested in China. Now, as the investment environment in China worsens, both are decoupling from China. China may gradually become more isolated. Therefore, Taiwan, Japan, the United States, and South Korea will closely unite, and countries will continue to divest from China.